Hello friends and welcome back for episode 28 of our Tori 1.3 Let's Play. Hope you're all doing well today. Uh, we are going to be moving into the next phase of our Terraria world, which includes us going to the jungle and beginning to mine the next grouping of ore called Chlorophyte. Uh, we've also got sort of a side grade that we can go after called Shroomite, uh, but that's actually generated from a mushroom biome, and we've got to create this little masher machine hammer object. Uh, I don't have that stuff yet, but I do think I will pursue it. Only problem is I need a little bit more gold to even get invested in that direction. Uh, before we get too ahead of ourselves, though, we do actually have to create a new pickaxe, because right now uh, I'm operating under one that's like two tiers old, and it's not even going to be able to hit the materials that we're going to need to grab. So in my inventory, you'll see we've got all of our hallowed bars, as well as one of each of the souls that were produced by killing the three mechanical bosses. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and turn that into a thing. Uh, this being the thing, the pickaxe axe. It is 200% uh, pickaxe power, 110% uh, axe power, and not to be confused with a hand drill. And now we have one. Uh, we got a regular one, too, so I don't know. Well, I'm not super worried about that. I don't think it really matters which one we end up with. Uh, let's go ahead and put that back there. I don't know why these tungsten bars ended up there. I'm going to guess that was a quick stack problem that happened. Uh, see if we can pop those down into our usual spot. Is this all tungsten? My goodness, we've got a lot of extra tungsten. And apparently we don't have any extra iron, which leads me to believe that it's hanging out in one of these chests over here. Oh yeah, we've got some strange plants to get into later, uh, so get ready for that. This is the one problem with Quickstack, man. It, just, it puts them in places I never would have expected. Alright, well, we'll look for it later, I guess. Um, we've got the sweet freaking mechanical metal skull still rocking on our character. I think this is a cool look. I think I'm going to use this for a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to put this in old gear 2 and I'm missing. Let's do that. And uh, yeah, I really love this rainbow wings cape combination. I think it's freaking sweet. Uh, if you guys have better ideas as to what I should be doing for my outfit, please go ahead and let me know. I'm cool with it. Um, but yeah, I think we've got what we need. Uh, we'll roll. I'll just go ahead and grab some of these and then roll out I also put a bed in my inventory, you may have noticed, that way I can uh, respawn at the jungle if necessary. Also, I am aware that this ammo box is redundant uh, by the fact... Oh, wait, did I... Yeah, okay. I was just checking to see if I put back my bars, and I did. Um, I'm aware that the ammo box is redundant because my, uh, well, armor set, I think it is, here? Yep, the chance to not consume ammo is on that. And what that buff does is make it so you have a 20% chance not to consume ammo. I get it. It's fine. It's a good habit, though, to be in to click that box. I'm going to eventually start forgetting, so I figure I might as well get it started in a good direction now. And later on, uh, hopefully it'll benefit me. Anyway, so we're going to go in the idea of creating potentially the chlorophyte armor for now, unless I run into a bunch of mimics with which I can grab money out of, and then hopefully uh, we can maybe skip the chlorophyte tier. Not sure if that's necessarily what we're going to do. We'll see how it plays out. Apparently on the last episode, I was very close to finding a hallowed mimic, so I'm a bit sad that apparently I didn't see it. Uh, maybe it registered on the mob tracker and I just didn't catch it out of the corner of my eye. It's unfortunate because I was actually paying pretty close attention, but that time I guess it eluded me. Uh, still, I'll keep my eye on it as much as possible. I don't know if we'll run into mimics in the jungle. I mean, I know it can happen, but it's not maybe as common? I don't know. I've seen them a few times. I don't think I see them too regularly, though. Um, so we're getting pretty close. Here's our jungle. We just need to find that one in there, and we'll, uh, you know what? We could probably set our house with the bed here, just so we've got a spot to come back to. Obsidian bed, I know it doesn't really match very well, but it'll get the job done. I didn't have to craft it, so that's what I'm proud of right there. There we go. Alright, so now if we die, we set our spawn point there. The cool thing about doing that... Oh, I thought that was a weird plant that was, like, a strange color. Uh, the cool thing about doing that is I don't actually have to, uh, like, have to teleport back to my house or run back to my house when I'm done with that spawn point. Wait, did I pass the entrance to the jungle here? Yeah, I totally did. Um, wait, did I? Oh, I passed it from the crimson. Okay, I'm an idiot. I forgot that that's, that's happening. All right, we'll go back. Uh, but yeah, I can basically just undo my spawn point and then mirror, and it'll take me back to my house because my house is set up right next to the default spawn point that starts you when you start the world. Uh, so if you create your house near that, that's like one little huge benefit 
that you can get little huge benefits. Wait, is this also an entrance? Uh, maybe not. No? Okay, we've got some water down here, so I'm gonna go with no. But I did see a dye item right here, so I'll go ahead and grab that. Sky blue flower. I'm still collecting dye items. No worries. I might not get them every single time I see them, but I try to get them most of the time. Alright, so I'm gonna put a, a bunch of flare or uh, torches here just so I realize this is the entrance. This is not the entrance! Okay, I shouldn't have done that. I should actually be paying more attention to the map. Two torches is acceptable. Everything beyond that starts to look like a marker. Right, we go through to the jungle, through the crimson. This is where the torches will live. There we go. And let us begin. Now, I'm worried everybody's gonna start talking about how it's like the, uh, the crimson spreading into the jungle. Now, this crimson was here already. I just dug through the bottom of it to get to the jungle because I do things in a weird way. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the way things had to be. If anything, it looks like the jungle's eaten into the crimson, but no, that's probably not true. I don't think it works that way. Um, so let's start looking at the walls. I should have really brought a spelunker potion with me. That's gonna make uh, make life a lot easier if I needed to. Uh, because what I'm doing right now, I'm gonna be looking for little green bits sparkling in the walls. One thing, though, that I might be able to take advantage of is a lot of my weapons, a lot of the ones that I've carried with me, have little proximity-based effects that cause little sparks to shoot into the walls and stuff. So if I just look really carefully, a lot of the time, well, this weapon maybe not as much, but uh, a lot of the weapons will cause things to kind of just go through the floor and ceiling, casting a little bit of light on whatever it is I'm looking for. And here is the chlorophyte in question, green shiny material that we're after. Uh, we're going to need about 350 or so blocks of this stuff, or uh, the ore of it, rather. Uh, bars, I think we're something closer to like 80 or 90 to get the job done for a full armor set. There's other objects, by the way, that are not armor that you can use with that. Oh, and here's the other be uh, benefit of being in the jungle, is we get these life fruit. Each time you eat one of these, it gives you a permanent plus five and turns one of your hearts up here into gold. So we want to obviously collect a full set of those while we're here, too. I uh, will be keeping our eyes open for that stuff, too. Now, the chlorophyte, if I remember, should spread uh, slowly but surely across the areas that it shows up in. So I think a lot of people's strategy, and I was told to do this on my last Let's Play, and I did it then. Might not do it now. Uh, but what it'll do is, if you leave it alone, you leave one little nugget left. It will hopefully cause more of it to spawn and thereby make it easier to mine later on. Um, like I said, I think there's enough of it, though, that I don't necessarily have to. But it might make things easier, I suppose, if I did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my life a little bit harder on myself, as I seem to often do in this Let's Play. I am sort of feeling a little bit sad that I didn't bring the potions with me. Uh, I think probably you are as well. How long will I go on before I decide to double back and go for them? That's the big question, because then I've got to run back from my house. I can't do the trick in the other direction. Oh, we killed the archaeologist. Achievement complete. I didn't know that was a thing that I was trying to do. Now I do. Actually, now that we've got these minecart rails here, we could probably use that to scope out some chlorophyte as well. Maybe I should lessen the bleeding, and before we spend too much time here, and before I get too invested in how deep I am in the ground, I should go back and go for the potions. It's a bit of an oversight. I should have stocked those in my inventory right away before I even started the episode. Uh, but we've already got a few bits here. It's, you know, I don't think this is going to take super long. Uh, oh, an eyeball. Do I have that statue? I don't know. I think I might. Oh, is this another little area with some more chlorophyte in the walls? Everything's got thorns in it, man. I feel like there should be an ability that you get eventually that, like, just disables you taking damage from any thorns. Whether that be the ones in the corruption, the ones in the crimson, or the ones in the jungle. Because, uh, there's a commonality through the entire game. You're pretty much running into thorns for, like, most of it. So that would be kind of a neat one, like the way the life fruit work. You just kind of, like, pop an item once. And then for the rest of the game, your character has no ability to be harmed by spikes like that. 
Um, I guess level two would be like in the dungeon spikes don't hurt you there either, but that seems like maybe stretching it a bit. Um, I guess it would just be sort of a, an artificial progress gate then. I don't know how much the developers wanted that kind of thing. It's funny because this game kind of runs the gamut from being, you know, action RPG, Metroidvania, exploration. It's like a whole variety of different genres that this encompasses, but it doesn't necessarily embrace any one of them. Like, completely, it sort of just rides the line between a bunch. And I think if there were more progress gating things like what I just described, uh, between, well, that kind of thing and then the life root and the, the heart pieces, all of that stuff is like my favorite elements of the game. The like permanent little things that put you ahead in terms of progression. I think I might even enjoy the game even more. Not saying I don't now, but if I was to try and perfect the idea, that would probably be what I'd go after. And by the way, I guess I'm mining silt right now. You know what we can do, actually? We'll go back to the house to get the Spelunker potions, and we'll just run a bunch of silt through the Extractinator. Just because we could actually get some cool items and ore out of that. Uh, chances are we won't, but, you know, gotta take a risk occasionally to get a win. Have I not even... I don't even think I've checked out this chest over here. Also, what is that material in the ceiling? so green I can't really tell. What is this? Oh, it's cobalt ore, okay. The green torch just makes it, like, really difficult to see what we're looking at. I envy the person in the comments that said, like, they never had a problem uh, understanding what it is the materials look like. I freaking... I, I would be that way if I could just use the textures and colors, but the fact that, like, the textures and colors always... Wait, iridescent brick? I've never even seen that before. Maybe not normal lighting. Um, but yeah, I've never been able to do that for whatever reason. Oh, another anklet of the wind. That might be useful in crafting, actually. And I think we're kind of beyond these healing potions at this point, so we're just going to chuck that and take the chest. Yeah, I'll add iridescent bricks to my cache of different bricks. I'm actually having pretty good luck for Chlorophyte, even without having the potions, honestly. I think we've found more than I usually find this quickly. Maybe we got a bit lucky, maybe the seeds that uh, caused them to spawn happen to be kind of close together. I mean, as you get deeper, you would expect to find more large chunks of chlorophyte. I'm not sure this material necessarily works that way, though. It just kind of spawns where it spawns, and occasionally you'll find one block little tiles of it. Sometimes you'll find like a 30 block tile, but it's pretty rare. Uh, little bits like this are mostly what you seem to find. Uh, sort of a medium ground nugget of ore. Kind of curious, actually, how much we've got after we finish mining this bit here. Actually, I see more in the ground. I think when I stop seeing more that's leading me to the next position is when I'll teleport back. Oh, this is not the way back, though. Around here. This freaking little corner of mud. Couldn't even see it. And actually, having the Mega Shark, I think, puts me in a great spot for progression right now. Like, as far as weapons go, I feel pretty happy with this. Uh, I mean, the only one real big thing that could make life a lot easier is if I get one of the ranged emblems. Which, you know, I'm still going to be looking for them. Uh, but if I don't get one, I mean, I still feel like I'm doing okay. Oh, apparently there's a Medusa in town. There she is. Alright, goodbye. Let's just grab this bit down here. And I don't think I see any more after that. So I guess we're going to be heading back. Yes, I walked down a little bit, so sue me. Alright, so we're going to undo our spawn point there, Mid magic mirror again, that puts us back at our default near our house. And it means we only have to do the trip in one direction, fantastic. Alright, so what do we end up with there? We've got... Chlorified, Chlorified, there it is, 108. You know, not a bad haul for the first bit. Let's go ahead and quick stack everything we can. Love when that happens. Do it again over here. Get rid of some torches, get rid of a uh, chest. This banner apparently does not quick stack because I have not put it in here yet. I kind of like the progression of each time I do it, it's like, oh, there's another banner I never have to worry about quick stacking again. And then eventually I will become the most efficient ever. Uh, so we want to take blocks, th uh, throw this guy over here. I had some kind of order to like which realm of blocks I've been positioning these in. I don't think I have that order anymore, so I guess we'll just do that. And archaeologist hat. Let's toss that in our vanity box. Coming through with a pretty nice collection of stuff so far. 
Uh, I don't think I need, like, a new anything to craft this, so I think we can just go ahead and make some bars. I'm not gonna make, uh, any pieces of anything yet. I'll just go ahead and do that in one fell swoop. Is there a reason to get the Chlorophyte Pickaxe? I think this is the one everyone always skips. It's just a plus to range. I don't see a particularly, uh, huge reason to bother with that. And we'll go ahead and put that there. I mean, th these can go in either of the two chests, since these are kind of unisex to either world creation. I'm just putting it there because this is the world that we're in right now. Uh, but it's not necessary to do so. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So we're just going to grab our potions, I guess, and head back in. Which is what I should have done in the first place. I've got a lot of them, too, so we should be good to go for a while. Going to go ahead and make some more torches. It really would behoove me to both create the mushroom biome as well as the rail, uh, sky rail trail. I think that would really come in handy going forward, so it's something I should really consider doing soon. I was just checking to see if I wanted to reforge anything before we head back in, and I don't think it's necessary. Oh, it's raining. That actually means I should go to the right real quick. I know this seems counterintuitive, but bear with me for a second. Now that we're in hard mode, rain means possible snowstorms when we get to our winter biome over to the right. And I would like to take advantage of that if I get the chance, because what that means is frost golems might appear, and they have the chance to drop uh, frost cores, which I can then turn into frost armor. I don't know if I necessarily want that armor as far as progression goes. What is this over here? Oh, it's just a weird combination of background and flowers. Um, but yeah, and just in case it is better, because I don't remember the stats on it, I didn't go to the wiki to check. I wouldn't mind having it, and even if it's not better, I wouldn't mind having it for my collection, because it's a pretty neat-looking armor. It's, well, it's okay-looking anyway. Uh, maybe nothing to write home about, but I'll take it anyway. And we still want to try and farm items out of the hallowed uh, area just for the sake of potentially uh, grabbing a unicorn mount. It can apparently drop from any enemy, so you got to keep that in mind. Rarely do I seem to see enemies. It's really set up like a blue candle area over there. And now is it just a regular snowstorm, or does it have to be like the heavy sleet storm that I see occasionally? Because right now it looks like pretty, pretty normal world. Yeah, nothing really too crazy going on. When you see that frost golem, you'll know. He starts shooting freezy lasers over from the other side of the world at you. He does not care about your life. In fact, he's very much against the concept of your life. Nothing. I don't know if it's a good idea to just kind of, like, go back and forth for a while, but that sounds like it's probably going to be fairly boring for you guys to watch, so maybe we won't. I'm just kind of taking a quick jaunt into the beginnings of the recesses of this cave. Did I ever even explore this cave? I don't think I really did, to be honest. Hey, a corn coin portal, a corn portal. Yeah, corn portal. Put that right up there with cornhub.com. Why did I not ever explore this? This is like the most obvious way in. I love my freaking traction on ice. It's so freaking good having these, uh, the boots set up the way they are. It's like not a bad chunk of area here to explore. Oh, okay, so then it crossed back into the realm of areas that I have seen right there. As you could tell, there were some rails around with some torches. Torches mean progression, means I've been there. Yeah, I guess we really don't need to spend time here then. Okay, well, I made my point. Fair enough, let's go back. Let's go back and we'll quick stack on the way out. Can't blame me for trying. Hopefully not anyway. And we'll just do one of these. Love it. And leave it. Goodbye. Oh, I quick stacked my potions. I almost just made the most fatal mistake. I just realized, like, what am I doing? I need to freaking favorite these. Um, I have people ask me occasionally, what is the button for favoriting things in your inventory? It's, uh, it's this right here. It's Alt-Click, and then it puts a little border around it. That's what that means, in case you didn't catch me saying that in one of the prior episodes. Also, I like to keep my grass trimmed over here on the left and right of the house. You can, uh, take that as you will. Just in case strange plants want to spawn, like, right next to the house. I've had it happen a number of times. I'm certainly not going to shun them. The more the merrier when it comes to those. 
Uh, the other thing I'm going to want to look out for while I'm in the jungle is plantera bulbs, which are little, like, pink plant bulbs that'll show up. This is the way we spawn the next boss. We break one of those, and a big angry spore spawn from Super Metroid will show up and start trying to eat my head. Uh, now what I want to do is, when I find a nice spot, what I want to do is create an arena around that spot. That way I have some life regen, some honey, potentially, uh, a few campfires, heart lanterns, all of, did I say that already? All of those things. Uh, so just to maximize my options when I get to having to fight that boss, he's not the easiest boss. I'll probably create some chlorophyte bullets. Uh, is this the... Oh, there's one of two. I guess I can go to either one. Oh, that's why I was confused last time and thought the crimson was spreading. It's because I went in through the non-traditional doorway that I created. That's fine. I could go to either one. It really doesn't matter at all. But this is the one that I put all the torches at, so why not be, uh, be serious about what I was trying to do there? Yeah, we'll set up an arena at some point. Then, after you, uh, if you do fail to the boss, you have to hope that the next time you find a bulb, you can lead the boss back to where your arena is. Uh, or that it spawns close enough that it's not an issue. Because the thing is, Plantera is really fickle. It will despawn really, really quickly if the placement is just slightly off. Did I not rest at my bed? I totally didn't, because I didn't put the bed in a convenient place. Alright, I have to do that. I'm sorry, I know this is a, a freaking waste of time. This is like the episode of Massive Inefficiencies. I got too overzealous about going straight down into the jungle town and forgot there's a reason why I didn't want to do that. I hope you can forgive me. Alright, back over to the left one more time. We were already right to the position where I wanted to be as well. I was just about to pop my Spelunker potion when I realized... That would be a mistake, because I'll get invested in being down there, and then I will die, and then I will be back to my house again, and I'll be sad that I didn't do it properly. There we go. Spore... Spore... Okay. Spawn point set. I'm ready to go. What is this freaking frog doing over here? I'll save you from your eternal turmoil, little frog. Don't worry. Uh, so I've been trying to go caffeine-free for a long time. I, uh... I get panic attacks on occasion, and it's kind of caused... Well, the panic attacks and migraines are both caused in part by having too much caffeine. And I used to have a pretty good deal of tea and coffee. So after a while of me realizing that's been a problem, I decided to just kind of, like, stop cold turkey. And then I had, like, a week's worth of terrible headaches from caffeine withdrawal. Uh, and then, you know, today I just decided I needed to have some coffee. So you'll notice my speech is a little bit impaired and strange because of that reason, I guess. My system is not reacclimated to the concept of caffeine, and, uh, well, hopefully it doesn't get too reacclimated because I'm not planning on making it a crutch again. It's strange if you don't really think much about it, but, like, caffeine really makes a lot of work elements so much easier. Like, if you have to do a repetitive task or something that's, like, requires you to be invested in it for a good amount of time without thinking too hard about it or just, like, kind of not being stressed out, coffee just kind of, like, helps that. It's a, it's a chemical dependence, and it's not necessarily the best chemical dependence, it's just we've, so, we've been very socialized to think it's totally acceptable. You know, coffee's not really a thing anybody makes a big deal about. But, it, you know, it's a drug, man. It really is, and it has very adverse effects on your health uh, if you go away from it. And perhaps if you continually use it as well. I'm not really sure. I haven't checked into the studies on, like, long-term caffeine use, whether that affects you in more serious ways. I, you know, I'd like to believe it doesn't do too much damage. I mean, especially in contrast to a lot of other things people do to cope with work life. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying my life is that hard in that respect. I'm just saying uh, a lot of people in office jobs and such, you know, habitual caffeine users, and I'm not putting any value judgment on that either. You do what you do, it's fine. Um, I mean, I've drank coffee for years before I decided that was gonna be a problem for my life, so again, no problem there. Uh, any more chlorophyte? I see a bit up there. It's probably going to take too long for me to get to, so we're going to go back in the other direction. Uh, but yeah, that's why I kind of preferred tea for the most part, because it was a much lower dosage of the caffeine element. But I just, I like the taste of coffee a lot. And I love all of the crazy coffee drinks you can get. My very favorite in recent memory being this, uh, it's a butter pecan iced latte you can get at Dunkin' Donuts. If you haven't had it, I recommend it. They actually do have a decaf version, so it's not like I was missing out. Uh, but it's just, you know, it would drive me to go after it. Because it was so freaking tasty. 
I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a, a decadent drink that you would get, like a, not like a milkshake almost, but you know, a coffee milkshake with a delicious, almost like an ice cream flavor to it. So, I don't know, if you're into that kind of thing, maybe check it out. I imagine a lot of you are. Um, do I want to go after that? I kind of do. There's a bunch down below. I'm a little worried about my health, though. My armor is maybe not holding up as well as I would have thought. Oh, the blood moon is rising. You know what? It doesn't matter. I don't think that's going to really have much of an effect on us right now. Uh, there's probably a couple of things I could use the blood moon for. Uh, one of them in particular, I think, was the item trough, the, the flying pig that I was after before. Do I care enough to go bother with that? I mean, I kind of do, but... Blood moons are not so rare that I want to make a big fuss about it. Especially when I already have a Spelunker potion going, and I also kind of, like, messed up twice getting into the jungle. I think we'll just kind of hang out here for the moment. See, I'm glad that I had this potion, because now I realize that this place I was just mining prior, I would have missed this big old chunk of chlorophyte. So we sorted that all out. Probably already have nearly 100 again. Where is my chlorophyte count? I don't know why, but this item is, like, so hard for me to see in my inventory. I keep not noticing it wherever it shows up. Alright, this is, like, another little bit right here that I would have passed up. Pickaxe axe doing nice work, breaking through stuff. Probably should have taken some dynamite with me as well. Kind of works to clear out a lot of these spaces very quickly. Uh, that looks like it's a little further over than I want to go. Oh, I missed one iridescent brick, so now I'm going to be carrying those around for a while. Alright, nothing much over there. I know I see a couple that I could go after, but... I'm looking for nice chunks in reasonable proximity to do the world without having to dig for too long. Alright, watch out, watch out. We're in a marble zone. Crap. That's exactly why I was saying watch out, watch out. It's because that kind of thing happens. Uh, I don't know what I dropped there. Eight gold coins? Alright, well, we'll head back in that direction. At least we'll get a quick glimpse at the blood moon. It's kind of cool looking, at the very least. And the biggest problem with what just happened there isn't so much the fact that I died, it's just the fact that, uh... Well, I lost the rest of that Spelunker potion, which kind of sucks. But we're not super far away from where we were. Blood Moon's feeling a bit chaotic right now, being in the Crimson. I'm losing a bunch of health. Uh, we'll make quick work of it. Let's run right back to where we started. Over in this vicinity. Hello? Excuse me? Alright, back in. Uh, we actually have a while to go before we can potion up again, so... Just, like, try and not take some damage and get back to where I died on the map. Which is down and to the left. I've sort of naturally followed the same path as I did last time, so it shouldn't be a big deal getting back there. Gotta watch out for those possessed armors, man. They, like, phased right into the background. I don't even notice them. And, uh, this little bit of, like... Quick damage that I'm taking, these little bites off of my health bar are not helping me out any either. That's what I was talking about, these thorns being everywhere. It's a bit of a problem sometimes. Not in general when you have good health regen, but I'm not sure why I emphasize that that way. Oh god, I'm, I'm dead again. Already dropped four more gold. Thankfully, I don't think the gold works like Dark Souls. Uh, in expert mode, the enemies will come and steal it from you, but in this mode, it's not that much of an issue. I'm gonna actually not health potion until I get down below the ground again. I'm gonna kind of float over as much as I can right now, too. Uh, you don't run into as many enemies up in the sky, for the most part. That should allow us to get over here a little bit more efficiently without getting attacked by pancakes. Or little red motorcycles, whatever you want to call them. Oh, one of those scary freaking clowns on a ball. Did they drop something special? I feel like they do. I know there are a couple of different spawns that show up during the Blood Moon that I haven't really messed around with too much. Demon Eye, there's one. Kind of just like an alternate skin swap version of the usual uh, red eyes white dragon. Oh, there we are. There's our gold. Pick it up, please. Thank you. Not kind of the biggest fan of what it's doing to my vision being in the Blood Moon. It's kind of making it a little bit harder to see. Everything seems to have sort of like a hue to it. Uh, where was I? 
Does it... Yeah, it's not gonna show my last death now, but I know it was near the marble biome, so I can use that as sort of a guide marker for getting back my gold. Uh, yep, so it's down and to the left, and we should be pretty much there. I'm gonna wait to pop my potion until I know that I'm in a good spot, just in case I get insta-killed again by the marble demons. Okay, there's... there's our gold. Uh, yep. Got it. Alright, so we're in a safe place now. Let's, uh, do that again. And get back to business. Alright, so we've got a bunch of little nuggets in the walls there. Really hoping that big chunk was a lot of the good stuff. It wasn't, though. Uh, wait, is that chlorophyte? It is. I don't know why, it looked slightly blue to me, so I was not sure if that was the correct material. It's uh, one of the bigger chunks that you'll usually run into. Um, again, keeping your eyes open also for life root. Usually whenever I say that, it means there's like one directly sitting next to me. I don't think there is this time, though. Is there a wall there? No, we're good. kind of want to go up into the ceiling after... Is that cobalt? I, again, I can't tell because of the freaking color shifting. We're gonna do that. Get a little bit ahead of the life cycle. Amazing how many times I can miss a thing that's directly in front of me. Uh, I'm gonna break into this area over here. I wanna say that's cobalt. But I'm so not sure. You know what? I can probably just do... Oh, it's not on my map yet. I was thinking I could just mouse over it on the map and then see for sure. Whatever. I don't know why I'm acting like this is going to take a long time. <clears throat> you think I could also match up the pattern from the chlorophyte that's sitting right next to it? Apparently I can't. Come on! It is chlorophyte. Alright. The effort was worth it. I wonder if it was better or worse, because in the past they had it set up where if you would start to click on an ore and then stop clicking on it, it would be like you never touched it before. Now it sort of actually retains the damage that you do to it for a short amount of time. I wonder what your opinions are about that. Is, is that better or worse to you guys? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Might not matter at all, but I guess for the sake of, like, jumping up and tapping on so Oh god, that's a Plantera Bulb. Uh, I don't want to activate that yet. Uh, yeah, that was the boss item I was talking about earlier. That's not Glorified. Pretty sure. Uh, and I think I have to mine that with the pickaxe for it to break, so I shouldn't probably be as scared as I just was there. <clears throat> just a natural inclination when I see one. Like, please don't make me fight a boss yet, I'm not ready. I think we're already in a pretty good spot for Chlorophyte. We're at 111. I think, like, one more little bit of diving through here should do it. A couple more big ore nuggets, and we'll be in a good spot. Usually this element takes quite a bit longer, but I think I've got the better armor now than I used to have for whenever I came to the jungle. Um, I don't know why, but I would rush it, I guess. Not always the best idea. That's, like, a lot of Chlorophyte over there. Uh, we're gonna, I guess, take the long way through this. Oh. I didn't realize that that broke through on the other side. Alright, let's toss some torches down. That's a lovely thing to see. Look at all that chlorophyte just shooting right into my inventory. Love it. You know, a lot of the reason I don't use the smart tool for this, uh, the digging element, I like to generally prefer to grab certain tiles over other ones, and, like, I try not to fill up my inventory totally up with mud blocks and stuff. So if I... I'm more careful about... Like, if there's five or six adjacent tiles, I'll try to just, like, get one or two of the ones that I actually want. Um, and it's not like I can't go ahead and change that later or switch it in and out of uh, 
the auto dig, but, you know, I just, I don't know. It's just become such a habit with me. I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. I do know of this tool, and I just used it to some good effect, I would say. Alright, down here. I think we'll go down here. As soon as I get rid of this jungle creeper. Uh, I don't have my... Yeah, they're there. Now we're gonna get shot at by these freaking wasps. If you guys wouldn't mind, I'm trying to do some work over here. Thank you. Oh, there goes our Spelunker potion. You know what, that's probably okay. I think I actually want to start heading back now. And I think maybe we'll finish off whatever's left on the next one. I might even have it right now. I might be pretty close. We're at 200, and I already had about 100 before, so... I might be really, really close. I might be doing myself a disservice by not finishing it. Alright. Oh, I got a strange plant! I didn't even know it was there. Let's just grab this last little bit in the wall, and then we'll head back. Is that it? I think that's it. Alright, cool. Got it. Done. Good. Undo that. Over here. I think it took longer for me to uh, keep doing the freaking dance through the jungle coming back to my house thing than actually just not doing that. Uh, so we'll start crafting these up. 35 plus whatever we had. Another 18. So we ended up with 53. Is that what we needed? I don't remember. Uh, let's just quick stack some of this stuff. We'll open up some plants and we will do the crafting on the next one. Oh, we got a tattered bee wing. That's actually uh, pretty good. I think I can use that to make another set of wings. Uh, but I kind of like the look of the ones I have right now. I also like the fact that, well, I spent a platinum on them, so I kind of want to get some use out of them, if that makes sense. Can I quick stack a frog? There we go. And we'll just toss a little bit of ore that's left. If it's like just slightly off, I'll go back and just grab a couple more. It's really not a big deal at all. Uh, so let's open some plants. I've got one, two, three, four. And what do you have to say about it, sir? One, two, three, four. We got Chlorophyte dye this time, and Living Flame dye. Did I have Living Flame dye before? I don't think I did, actually. Let's look over here. Crafted dyes. Yeah, we had Living Rainbow dye, not Living Flame dye. Alright, let's take a quick look at what this is all about. First, we're going to try the usual, which is put it on the cloak. Oh, this is neat. It's kind of more subtle than I expected, but it's not bad looking. And this across my whole set actually might be pretty cool as well. Uh, let's just quickly put these back over here. Oh, it looks way better on the helmet. Yeah, that's kind of like a not bad looking burning looking thing. Because I had the Hades die and that one just kind of looked cheesy. Oh, that's sweet as hell. Alright, then we'll put the rainbow on this. I mean, well, character's glowing. I look a little bit like Jason with, like, the hockey mask on right now. And let's try the chlorified dye. I'm going to guess this one's maybe not quite as dramatic, but I think the living ones have been the coolest so far. Oh, creepy. All right. Not a huge fan of that, but it, the eyes are very creepy. Um, neat. All right, so I'll have to come up with a new combination then based on some of these dyes. Kind of into, like, this combo working out for me. Anyway, that's going to be today's episode. Uh, we very close to uh, finished off the armor set, I think, in just one single episode, which I'm not used to doing. Obviously, we've got a lot more to do in the jungle. We've got to kill Clan Plantera. We've got to get the rest of uh, the heart set up. Maybe slightly more chlorophyte, but if I do need more, it won't take more than one episode for sure. So maybe we'll start building a mushroom biome next time. Maybe we'll start building an arena for the uh, Plantera fight. You know, plenty of options. Uh, and of course, I want extra chlorophyte so I can build bullets if I do want to get, you know, the Mega Shark happening. Because uh, fighting Plantera with chlorophyte bullets is a huge help. They home in on the enemy, which is uh, really big when you can't necessarily see where they are. 
which is the case in Plantera. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you on the next one. Later.